You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to look at the story behind Ren Sarazawa and his father, Ishiro Sarazawa. Now, one of the things we often hear regarding Godzilla vs. Kong, especially amongst kaiju fans that have followed the MonsterVerse since day one, is that Ren Sarazawa in the movie was a wasted character. And I have to agree. Uh, he was definitely wasted in the movie. They did not take the steps necessary to give at least some context into his story and didn't even acknowledge the fact that Ren is the son of Ishiro Serizawa from the prior movies. However, there is a story there to be told. There is a story that exists, and that story exists within the novelization of Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, before we get into this video, I want to give some spoiler warnings, because if you have any interest in reading this novel, then you may not want to watch this video, as I'm going to be going into the story in detail regarding Ren Serizawa, his relationship with his father, how he feels about Godzilla, and why. However, if you want to just know the story, then stick around. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and definitely share this with some other fans who may want to get a little bit more context into the background regarding this character. Now, I am going to be discussing some story elements and paraphrasing some lines from the book and also reading directly some quotes. But to give you a general sense of what exactly we learned from about Ren Serizawa in the book is that he obviously, as many of us predicted, has issues with his father because of the fact that his father spent so much time studying and learning about Godzilla and basically no time with Ren whatsoever. But it also runs a lot deeper than that. We also learned that Ishiro Serizawa wasn't exactly uh, not only a great father, but he wasn't exactly a great husband. Now, there could be some understanding here. You know, one of the things we also learned much later, in fact, I think some people learned in Godzilla vs. Kong is that it turns out Ishiro Serizawa was the director of Monarch. He ran the whole show. This is not something that I thought was his position you know even from the first movie i always felt like there was somebody running monarch but he was one of their like top scientists but no it turns out that ishiro sarazawa has been the director of monarch uh ever since he came into it and um working for monarch has been a family legacy so to speak uh, one thing we learn about in the book is that ishiro's father ishii had lied to him about working on a cargo ship as a sailor during World War II, but actually was working for Monarch as well. So there is a history of fathers not being uh, attentive towards their sons within the Sarazawa family. The difference here is that we learn that Ishiro and his father Iji got a chance to kind of reconcile their differences right before uh, Iji died. And Ren is very bitter about not having the same opportunity to reconcile with uh, Ishiro and he blames Godzilla for that. And despite the fact that he has every right to be upset at his father, um, he still, even while he was growing up, he still very much worshipped his father. He looked up to him. In fact, he, he got into engineering and building just so he can, you know, uh, impress his father and, and earn his affections. And it's really unfortunate. You know, because obviously we learn in the movie that, you know, Ren becomes obviously very talented when it comes to building. I mean, he's one of the reasons Mechagodzilla exists. And it's very interesting because the book talks about how Ren sees Godzilla as a bigger brother. And in fact, there's one, one interesting quote in the book, and I'm going to do uh, quote this here. If you remember the scene in the movie where he's standing atop the building the first time we see him and he's looking out across the city to Godzilla as he's wrecking Apex right before he gets on the helicopter. In the book, he says this, hello, brother, he thought. They don't learn, do they? Those pitiful weapons can't stop you, but I can and I will. And that's when he got into the helicopter. And you can see here he has, he acknowledges Godzilla as his brother. And he, he even says in the book that the reason he always saw Godzilla as like a bigger brother is because he was the one that his father worshipped. He was the one that his father gave all his attention and love to. And if you look back on the movies, that's true. Uh, Ichiro Serizawa was very, very much uh, in awe of Godzilla and very much emotionally attached to him for better or for worse, uh, with, you know, reciprocation from Godzilla or not. And we could probably say that 
and King of the Monsters when, uh, when excuse me, when Ishiro sacrifices life for Godzilla, maybe that was the one moment that Godzilla finally connected with him. But beyond that, you know, there's no evidence to say that Godzilla connected with Ishiro the same way like Kong connects with uh, Gia, for example. And we also find out later when he finally when he finally gets into the Mecha Godzilla for the first time, the scene where he uh, destroys the skull crawler. Uh, one of the things we also always laugh at when we see that scene is the look on his face after he kills it. But the book does a great job going into detail as to why he feels that way. And part of the reason is because when he's con when he connects to Mecha Godzilla, he's actually connecting with the life force of Ghidorah. In other words, when he um, plugs in, so to speak, for lack of a better term, he feels like the kaiju. He can feel what Mecha Godzilla is doing he can actually feel the claws he can feel the power of being as big and as strong as they are he it's actually a sensation he he, he uh he experiences um and it goes into great te detail into the book on on how that happens you know in terms of the connection with uh the the life force of Ghidorah that's coming in and it turns out and i'll do this in a separate video but it turns out they actually have access to two Ghidorah heads not just one and uh, I'll do a separate video on that. For those of you who are on my recent streams, you know why that happened. Uh, but we'll, I'm going to be covering the novel this whole week. I'm going to be doing separate videos on story elements that they missed out on in the movie because there's a lot. There is a lot. In fact, if you read the book, the book's almost 300 pages. You don't get into the aircraft carrier scene where Godzilla and Kong meet for the first time until more than halfway through the book. I think it's like page 115 or something. You get into that first fight. So everything before that is all story and i would say about 80 percent of it is brand new stuff that's just not in the movie uh giving more context not only to ren but more context even to bernie to mark russell who has a much bigger role in the book but in terms of this you know one of the reasons that because even in the book there's not much story behind ren but we also understand that the reason for that is because there's not much of a relationship with ren and ishiro and uh, we, all, we all know why they cut that out of the movie. A lot of the reasons they cut a lot of this out of the movie is because once you read the book, you realize this movie would have been about three hours long if they put all the story elements in. And they wanted the movie to be short. They wanted the movie to focus on the monsters and the monster fights because really that's what the general audio audience wants. And I, and I understand that. It's unfortunate because there, it is a great story. But I understand why they did that. But at least in the book you understand Ren's motivation you understand the history of the Sarazawas and what has been built through their tradition working for Monarch you know because like I said Ishiro's father worked for Monarch then uh Ishiro worked for Monarch and then Ren obviously went the direction of Apex so like for example Ren says in the book you know um you sacrificed your life to um see that Godzilla lives and I will see that he's destroyed but later on we all find out he actually sacrifices his life to try and destroy Godzilla so it's kind of an interesting dynamic there you have the father who sacrifices his life so that Godzilla can go on and fight and Ishiro unwittingly sacrifices his life so that he could destroy Godzilla so when you see those things play out and, and the, how the dynamic works out there even though it may not be as detailed as some people want the detail that is there is very satisfying and once you understand that the relationship between ren and ichiro was pretty much non-existent you tend to understand why even in the book the explanation regarding ren and his motivations are very short because the history with his father is very short in fact one other thing we also find out like i said in the beginning of the video because we're going to wrap it up here in a few minutes is that ichiro not only wasn't a great father but he wasn't even that great of a husband and it's it's kind of weird because we all look back on Sarazawa and we're like, oh, what a great character, what a great this. But you find out that, yeah, he might have been a great monarch director. He might have had a great understanding of the Titans, but the, all that was at the cost of his family. Um, his son, Ren Sarazawa, actually had to plan and and go through setting up and working things out for his mother passing away. And he had to do this at 18 because his father was away on monarch you know duties and his father didn't come back till like two days after the funeral was over and the first thing he said to ren was like your mother would understand and in the book ren says yeah but would, do you understand 
And again, it, it just puts Ishiro Serozawa in a, a different light. I'm not saying the guy's a complete asshole, but he was so enamored in his work and he was so in awe of Godzilla that it, it cost him any kind of relationship with his son. And who knows what kind of relationship he had with his wife. Now, I get the feeling that his relationship with his wife was one of understanding. His wife knew how important his role was. His wife was willing to accept that because of the level of the events that were taking place, you know, discovering such a big monster and things of that nature. But still, uh, in terms of his son, his son sees a relationship with his mother and his father that's almost non-existent, even though they may understand it. And then he himself has no relationship with his father at all. And he does everything in his power to develop one. He does everything in his power to get his father's attention. And it goes to the wayside, nothing. And then what he's left with is a giant kaiju who he sees as a, as a, as a brother simply because his father was more impressed with him than he was his own son, despite all his son's accomplishments. So, but you know, that, that's it for this video. I just wanted to share that, that, uh, detail with uh, those of you who may not have read the book and you know may not want to be interested in writing the reading the book just want to know what the story is but there is a story there regarding ren and sarazawa uh, his father and it is a good one it is short but there's a reason for that as i mentioned it's important to understand that ren and ishiro did not have a relationship and because they didn't have a relationship there's not much of a relationship to tell but what was there what is there in terms of story elements is really good and i think it is the one part of the book the one part of the story they should have kept in the movies uh it, it is a big missed opportunity but if you want to know what the story is behind it and, and there's a little bit more to tell there i didn't give everything away there's more towards the end uh when he gets into mecha godzilla for the last time when uh you get to kind of see what his final thoughts were and what his final feelings were before uh Ghidorah takes it takes uh mecha godzilla over completely so um but anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something regarding the story. We're going to be doing more story elements from the book than are not in the movie this week. Uh, so stick around for that. And we'll obviously be doing other content. I will have my uh, my Falcon and Winter Soldier review up probably much later tonight. And uh, I'll have more Godzilla novelization videos coming this week explaining story elements that are not in the movie that will help make the movie make a, hot, uh, a whole lot more sense. So... That's it for this video, guys. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Click here to watch more content. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, make sure you like and share this video. If you want to know when the next video is up, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button. And most of all, make sure to click that subscribe button for regular content.